Hi, my name is Frankie. I'm here to interview Kieran. Thank you for agreeing to take part in the Respect Project's Logan Sport and Hero interview. To start off our interview, could you tell me where you grew up and what your childhood was like? Well, Frankie, like yourself, I'm a Ballyhone man, true and true. Uh, I was born and raised in Billy's Road, Ballyhone. I was uh, back in 1980, a long time ago now. Uh, the house was very much, I was the youngest of seven, Frankie, so mm -hmm. I was the baby of the house, and some of our ones still call me the baby of the house, but we had uh, a good upbringing. My father was a family man, farmer, and a big football man, I suppose that's where I got my passion for, for Gaelic games and, and just indeed sport in general. So it's, uh, in the youngest of seven, you're always out and about in the garden or out in the farm helping with, with Dad and my eyebrows. But, uh, yeah, I was only a, a stone's throw away from body home football pitch. So yeah. football was, was, was always, always out of my heart. What schools did you go to and how did you find life at school? Well, I first started off my primary school education in Bodyhoon Primary School and Mr. Market here, Colin now, who's now retired, was uh, the school principal and uh, seven great years there in Bodyhoon. Uh, from Bodyhoon Primary School, I went on to the Abbey Grammar, the old Abbey Grammar in Courtney Hill and fond memories, some some great people that went to school were from Bodyhoon, but also some boys that you meet, as you know yourself, from South Armagh and they become yeah. really, really good friends down the years. Uh, from that there uh, the education from the Abbey or sorry from Ballyhoon to the Abbey and then I went to the university to study uh, sports studies and that's how it sort of got me into the career realm uh, I'm now. What sports did you play growing up and what is your fondest memory of these? Yeah some of the two sports I would have played growing up I partook in a wee bit of soccer when I was roughly 11 or 12 just wasn't for me my first touch wouldn't be the best frankly so from a younger age probably from 9 or 10 playing Gaelic games with uh, body home my whole career did also dabble in a wee bit of uh, over in America went to America one summer and played for an Aguila club uh, Armagh and Notre Dame it was a great experience and I would encourage anybody to, to, to go across the water America or England or anywhere um, but my best memories I probably think is up in body home pitch there was no mobile phones back there and you knew when to come home it was when you were hungry the tummy was rumbling yeah. you would have come back home for something to eat mommy would have had the, the dinner on the table and you're back up to the pitch and you're playing just with the boys out in the pitch, uh, playing different games, 5v5, 6v6, you know, headers and volleys, the stuff that you all probably do. Yeah. Probably one of the biggest memories I have is my cousin, Adrian Barry, 1994 World Cup. We played Mayor Bridge in a league semi final down in it would have been the Marshes back then, it's now the Park Esther. Mayor Bridge, and he's a first cousin of mine, Mayor Bridge beat us by a point, Frankie, and he was having a sleepover in my house that night. So, Aaron were playing the World Cup, I can't remember who it was, and we were watching a bit of it in my living room. And then with two of us on outside to play football in my backyard, and I wouldn't speak to him the whole time. He was there until the next morning to find my senses. So they were good memories, and always he always sticks by me, he always gives me a bit of stick. But that day, we beat you in the, in the league, and then you wouldn't talk to me overnight. So some good memories, but uh, they, soon, they soon disappear. So like, how was life like in America? Like, Was it good and all? America was a good opportunity, Frankie. It was when I was a student at university and no ties, no, no, no children, no, no managing teams. So we had an opportunity in 2003, the body home boys, myself, Paul Morphe, Paul McAteer, uh, and Eddie McAteer, we all went out, uh, to Boston, to Armagh, Notre Dame. It would have been true a fella, uh, Shane Mullen and Darren Mullen. Marty would know them well. Mm. And, uh, Shane used to live out there for years. So they got set up with the club. And I have to admit, Frankie, it was home from home. The boys out there, boys from Galway, Kerry, Dublin, they looked after you because they were Irish and one of your own. So we went out, we played a bit of football, we'd done a bit of travel, and went down to New York, I went up to Cape Cod. There's so many things we'd done, and the boys really, really looked after you. We played on a Sunday afternoon out in Canton, that was their main, uh, their main playing phase. It was about 30, 35 minutes out of the area we stayed in, Brighton. And out, but in went too much like but the memories and the friendships we made with them fathers and I would still it's over twenty years later now, Frank, I would still make contact with the chairman of the club about a Q meeting and just touch base because it's it's nice to to touch base with people who look after you when you're mm -hmm. out there. So that's that's what the GA had done for me, you know, it yeah. made memories and friendships not only in these shores but across the Atlantic in the States. Who would have been your sporting hero growing up and why? Sporting hero, oh I'm a big Liverpool fan, Frankie, Same. as you know. Uh I was born in the 80s and 90s and the 80s Liverpool were very, very successful. Towards the 90s, their team was just not as good, but 
some of my heroes growing up in, in terms of Liverpool and soccer would have been John Barnes, running down the wing, was an exceptional player. Graham Soon is a really tough midfielder in, in, in the middle of the park for Liverpool. Up front, you had Ian Rush, who's still the all-time goal-scoring record for Liverpool. Uh, from a GA's perspective, uh, in the 90s, of course, down one in All-Ireland in 91, 94. Uh, growing up, DJ Kane, Yuri Shamrock's man, who's a really, really gifted player, good on the ball, strong, aggressive, and could pass the ball really well. Up front for down in those times, 91, 94, you had, of course, we James McCartan, who was a manager down in previous years. Uh, Greg Blaney, really, really exceptional centre half forward, physically so strong. And of course, Mickey Linton inside, who, who tormented many a uh, team in both Ulster and Ireland. So they were my, my childhood heroes, both in, in soccer and Gaelic growing up. You went on to play Gaelic football with Ballyhoon senior team. Could you tell me more about the setup? the step up into senior football and how you adapted to this? Yeah, well, we came, we had a pretty good underage team, Frankie, as I mentioned, played with Rony Morda, Paul Morphe, Damien Campbell, uh, Paul McIntyre, but a good underage team and with relatively good success. So when we came 18, 19, we were sort of thrown straight into senior football and we had no other choice. Uh, not like now where there's a different rule for minors when it takes a couple of years to get into the senior setup and it's it's, it's a different ball game uh, in this area. But, uh, we were thrown into it in 98-99, coming off from a good minor team and playing McCrory Cup football with the Abbey. And my first year, full year playing in 99, as my first full season, I did play in about 97, 2017. My father was a manager back then. I'll never forget, my first game was down in Tull Leach and my bro, Francie, was full back. I was the other cornerback. I gave him a hospital pass, frankly, over the top of his head and, and there got him ruined. And the, uh, the opposition player landed on top of his calf. His calf spread out the gut. So my bro still gives me a stick about that there. But uh, yeah, that was my first sort of come on as a sub that day when I was 17. I was very nervous playing my bro and my dad as a manager. But in 1999, we won an intermediate championship. And that was my first sort of taste of success. We were a Division Two team back then, yeah. body And we would have went up along with Nuri Shamrock, Division One, would have come back down. So... It would have been it would have been a big battles when Yuri Shamix back in the in the in the late nineties, early nineties now. Who would you say was the best player you played with and why? At school level I played with a lot of good boys from both down and Armagh, but two exceptional players that both both went on to represent their county was Barry Shannon, Drum and T and represented Armagh, and Damien Rafferty. Both played with them in the Abbey and Curry Cup. I was in the centre, centre half back and they were either side of me right in the left half back and there were two great men to have alongside you. Uh, they would have covered me a lot now in my days playing because the pace wouldn't have been the best in, in the world but they were two exceptional players uh, at school level. At club level uh, I played with some of the best ones Shane Mahon as we know mm. represented down, played for Cliftonville as well uh, played for Ulster and Railway Cup medals uh, Ron Morda, Ronnie was uh, an All-Iron minor winner in 99 played for the club for years and uh, Paul Murphy again, Nabi, who was a late developer, couldn't get on the minor team that we played in Frankie, but he really worked hard at his game, mm-hmm. and that's a, that's a, a good trait to have. And then he eventually was a down senior player. Uh, Damien Supi Campbell, Marty would know Supi, he was a, a small fella in stature, but an excellent defender, real hard man, marker, one of the best blockers of the game I've ever seen. So I'm going to throw it on the line here. I'm going to go from a stick my family, I'm going to say it's Damien. Trippy Campbell as uh, one of the best players I've ever played by a club level. Who was the best player you played against? And why? Played against? Uh, um, two stories I'm going to give you, Frankie. We played years ago, there would have been an Ulster Senior League. It still exists, but Ballyhun don't play it anymore. And we played the mighty Eric Cairn and Peter Canavan, the god, they say. Mm-hmm. He was probably one of the best players ever in Ireland. So they came up to Ballyhun. It was, a, it was a March day and the pitch was actually in good shape. And... Peter was unstoppable that day. There's about four or five of us all tried marking him and everybody knew his dummy was coming. He'd give you the eyes. And I remember the manager at the time or one of the vices, do you want to have a go on him? Nobody could mark him. That's He was one of the toughest opponents. At club level, uh, it was Mark Poland, Benny Coulter, Big Ambrose, but I have to say Benny. Benny was a was a hero, probably a hero of yours growing up, uh, Frankie. And I had, uh, my head was spinning one night out near Bridge when I marked Benny, and I'll tell you what he, what 
he scored against me, but it was it wasn't a nice experience. And yeah. he was a good lad on the pitch, and even better for off the pitch. So Benny Coulter is probably the, the best for a player I ever played against. Yeah, thank you. What would you regard as the highest and lowest points of your sporting career, and why? The highest point of my career, sporting career, probably when that first intermediate in 1999, because you were playing with older fellas uh, within the squad who were maybe 25, 26, right up to 30. I was only 19 years of age coming in, and that was a great experience for me. Uh, good memories. The lowest ebb of my career was probably, I say, we had a good, good underage team in Body Home, but us, Body Home, or us, Mere Bridge and Kilku were, were the rivals. Mm -hmm. Kilku beat us in a minor quarter final up in Body Home pitch by a point. Anthony Devlin, who went on to play uh, senior level and won the Ulster medal, but Kilku scored at one of the best goals you'd ever see. Our goalkeeper could never stop it, and there, were, there was tears at it, even because mm -hmm. that was the last chance you'd ever have a chance of winning a minor championship. So, Robbie Kilku was uh, the standout memory of one of the, the, the moments in my career that really hurt. If you could revisit one moment in your career, what would it be and why? The Kilku game, probably, but one of the other ones, and then the fellas that I played with at Minor, we still went on to play senior football with our club, but come back to my Abbey days, and you've only seven years together, if you stay on for that time down your year, that was Frankie. Uh, we got beat in the McCrory Cup semi-final by St. Michael's and the Skin, uh, where again, beat by two points on the day. And the biggest regret is I never got a chance to play with them boys again. A lot of them boys went on to play County Miners to get either down or a I just wasn't at, at that level, and my biggest regret was never got to play with them boys again because they were they were now my, my second team. Uh, so that was one of the biggest regrets ever. And if I could rewind back the clock again, Frank, and go back to the Albion and play McCrory football, I would. And that was probably one of the reasons why I, I, kept, I kept doing my studies just to play McCrory Cup football. Mm. Who would you say had the biggest influence on your sporting career and why? Biggest influence to date and still has, he gives like give me his two pennies worth is my, my father, Pat Morda. Uh, he played football, he's a record playing football, probably a body home, even just after the reserve football. I think he played till he was 52. He still lets me know about it. He still says he's got the best hands ever in body home. Got a banter, obviously, but he was uh, the manager of the club. He was football through and through. Football was his life, probably maybe more so than family sometimes, frankly. He would have put football first, but uh, he was my role model growing up and I loved going when I was a, I never go in the body home collecting the footballs behind the nets for the boys kicking them out to them so probably da, my dad was the uh, forced mentor as such and he would have he would have when I couldn't drive I would have went to coaching courses uh, and I remember going to one in Castle Blaney and Manon when my dad drove me when I was 17 frankly just because I had an interest and passion in coaching and I wanted to be like he was and that was a good stepping stone for me and the, the qualities he had of Hard work, discipline, respect for the opponent, respect for each other, respect for the fellow mentors. Them attributes, attributes sorry, that he passed on to me, that's something that I try to pass on to my players uh, within Body Home and with, working within the, the GA at the moment at Ulster level. I know you've been involved in coaching ladies football. How did you find this experience and how do you see ladies football developing in the coming years? Yeah, well, frankly, ladies football has really grown twofold in Ulster. We have 39,000 members playing uh, LGFA in the nine counties of Ulster. I fell into it in uh, my previous post. I started employment with Ulster GA as a schools coach going around the local primary schools in Ballyhone, Bourne, Mayor Ridge, Hilltown in 2007, right up to 2015. And an opportunity came up with ladies football as a development officer. Mm. A girl went out of the office, was just having a baby, and it was only meant to be for nine months. That was in 2015, Frankie. 2015, 2024, so near nine years later, uh, I'm still in the post. Uh, I got a promotion there before uh, Christmas as development manager, so I look after two staff members now and I oversee the development of latest football within Ulster, and that's not just coaching, that's refereeing, administration, bit of governance, bit of PR and marketing, so it's a, a wide wide range of things that I, I do within the role. In terms of the, it, it growing, it's... It seemed to be probably it was on social media and all that. It's that integration is going to happen where the three codes, J, LGFA and Camogie are going to be one. And I think it'll be a positive thing because, you know, up in Bally Home, Frankie, we've only one pitch and yeah. the boys get the, the first call on the pitch and the pair of Camogues or the ladies footballs are 
our second class citizens. And so hopefully, hopefully that will change and the game's grown, the numbers are grown and the number of people wanting to go and watch our games. Uh, Crow Park before COVID, we had one of the biggest attendances for uh, women's football in Europe. That was obviously broken there uh, recently with uh, soccer and the UEFA Championships, but it's it's definitely growing. I think it is going to get bigger. You could you currently work with the Ulster GAA. Could you tell me more about this role and how you got involved in it? Yeah, as I touched on there a minute ago, Frankie, I, I finished my degree. I seen an opportunity come up. The job was advertised with, with Ulster GAA and said to you, if you're doing a job that you love as your hobby, but then you're getting paid to do it, it's mm. it's quite a nice place to be in. So I applied for the job, Frankie, and went for an interview and was successful. And that was back in 07. And the, the training we had for a month, really intense in-house training about how you work with kids, how you uh, differentiate into different ability groups. So it was, it was a good experience and probably a good experience for me as well. Big Joe McMahon, who played for Trone, was one of a, a school's coaches as well. And learning off him and getting ideas off him, what to do in Trone training and, and whatnot. So one one piece of advice would be definitely tap into people who are in any sporting context and tap their tap their experience and, and, and ask them, Is, what could I do to get in the door? What could I do to make me a coach? Or how could I develop myself? So that there was no 7 to 15. And then, as I say, the ladies football came, came on board. I took the opportunity, it was new to me and I was never involved in the ladies game and I've just embraced it and I say I would be in regular contact with people throughout the nine counties in Ulster, doing workshops out in the ground, visiting schools, promoting the game. Just there two weeks ago I was doing a, a kicking workshop in Larrakenny. So as much as I'm based in Newry, County Down, I have to service the nine counties of Ulster and try and help everybody within them, them nine counties. As a peer leader with the Respect Project, I am currently completing a Level 2 Sports Leadership Qualification. What advice would you give someone like me who is keen to get involved in coaching? I would say, Frankie, try and get as many qualifications under your belt as possible. Down the line, then, when you go to for any future employment, if it's me and you going for a job interview and I've got, say, a GA coaching qualification, and you've got your RAFA badges, you've got your GA, you've got your basketball, you've maybe got gymnastics, more strings you have to your bow, the better, I would say. Definitely get, get over to the local club and just get a taste of what it, it is to like to deal with the, the younger ones. Now, we're always looking to help, Frankie, with the nursery ones with your, your EK and the, the younger children in the club. And listen, it's tough work. It's demanding. Uh, you need a lot of patience. But I would say dip, dip your feet in it. Because I did, when I was around your age, I dipped my feet in it and I got the taste for it. Uh, I got the bug for it then. And it's something that I would say... We need more young people coming through the, the coaching pathway because at the end of the day, Kieran Murder's not going to be around forever. And we need the next generation of young boys and girls coming through. And you are the next generation in Bally Home, Frankie, and involved in your local soccer club as well. So definitely go to as many sessions, learn from best practice from people that you're currently involved with, go and observe best practice. and do as many coaching qualifications as you can, either within school or outside in, in, in environments, I guess, with the Respect Project. Yeah, thank you. What are your future aspirations in sport? In sport, uh, professionally, in, in my own uh, background, I want to really push the ladies football on and get that membership number up to 45, 50,000, 50, 000, sorry, members playing, playing our game. And that, that goes from recreational sport right up to competitive sport in ladies football. Uh, from my own volunteer uh, background with my own club body home, one day I would like to manage our senior senior club team. It's uh, It's been always a dream of mine to follow in my father's footsteps and manage the senior team. But at the minute, I have three young fellas under nine years of age and I'm, I've, I'm juggling a lot with that, taking their underage teams, looking after the club, uh, the club coaches in terms of I'm the club coaching officer. So, I'm trying to make sure all the, the, the club coaches are, are singing off the right hymn sheet. Mm -hmm. And between that and my own work, being out in the even time, as I say, going to Ladder County, it's just taking a senior club team, Frankie, is, is, it's, a, it's a huge demand. So that's probably one of the things I'd like to do in the future. Right. Thank you, Kieran, for allowing me this opportunity to get, in, to get an insight into your life and career in sport. I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you, Frankie.